My gut tells me that Teofimo Lopez is going to pull it off. Um, you know, and it's going to really, really launch his, um, his career uh, even further past where he is now. Um, I think, you know, Vasily Lomachenko, obviously, his footwork and his, his skill and, and who he is in boxing speaks for itself. Uh, but I just over his last few fights um, that I've watched, I, I know he's there to be hit. Uh, Linares dropped him, and then he came back and stopped him. But I mean, he's it just showed that you know he can be he can be touched. And I think Teofimo Lopez has youth on his side. He has that power, and most importantly, he has that that real confidence. He believes in himself. Um, he hasn't lost, so you know I think he he believes that it's damn near impossible. For him to, to not win this fight, he's the bigger guy, the stronger, um, and his belief got me believing. So, um, even though I wouldn't be surprised if Loma was to pull it out because of who he is, much respect to him. Um, I'm a I'm a bet on one of those shots landing from Lopez and him being able to get the job done. So, I'm rolling with Teofimo Lopez, even though you know that's going against popular opinion. That's what I'm rolling with. Why won't you give this man credit for anything? And I'm not here just to talk my shit. I'm here to actually really do my thing. And if they got to translate that to you, just look in my eyes and you understand. You ain't nothing but to me. You know what? I... I don't understand the Lara what he said because I don't I don't understand the English. So maybe it's not very it's it's not working with me. I boring and just about fight and what happened in the ring. Why won't you give this man credit for anything? <laughs> I don't watch uh, any of my opponents. I don't watch any of them. I, I'm not going to get the same Loma that had fought Linares or Pedraza. You know, so when we get in that ring, you know, then we say, then I, I get to do what, I, what we've been working on. It's everything and everything. I mean, it's the best fighting the best. The uh, entertainment sport, you know, this is where it comes to. So really what it comes to is, man, uh, I like to show off. He got the ring IQ. I think he sees the ring IQ in me. And we're just going we're gonna to display it October 17th. And I'm looking forward to it. Enjoy the show, man. Uh, it's a takeover against uh, the high tech, they say. And uh, two of the guys going at it. Um, anything can happen. One punch can change the fight or one, one punch can end the night. So, you know, tune in. So here's top rank quoting Anthony Crawler before he goes into a fight. Before Lomachenko goes into a fight against... Teofimo Lopez. He says, I remember the years before I fought Lomachenko, Ross Amber, Amber, who wraps his hands, told me he was the best he'd had seen. He said he sees moves, three or four moves before they happen. And that's what came to my head when I was on the floor face down. <laughs> okay. You're getting punched and then when you want to throw yours, you can't find him. That's frustrating. Jose Pedraza. So oh, when it comes and it's all said and done, I'm not going to get the same Loma that had for Linares or Pedraza, you know. So when we get in that ring, you know, then we say, then I, I get to do what I what we've been working on. That this the whole thing behind this is that 
Lomachenko had this stoic, mean mug look. And this further reinforces this belief, this abstract belief that I have, that Lomachenko is going to lose. Because I see a reference here, even with that mean mugging, to Sonny Liston and Muhammad Ali mouthing off. Believe me, I think, I think, you know, I think I would hate to see Lomachenko go out like that. But I think he's going to lose. He might surprise me, of course. I might be absolutely and totally wrong because I'm not one of those people who really believe that. But I, I see references here and there that lead me back to believe, believing, believe, forgive me, that there's a good chance that we're going to get a repeat of what we saw back then. Was it 1962 or 1965? I can't remember the date exactly. I think it was 1965, wasn't it? Oops. Historians are like, yeah, you don't know shit about boxing. That boxing has produced this year. Vasily. Entertainment. I'm in, into, in the uh, entertainment sport. All you right, know, this right. is where it comes to, so. Define failure. Провал? Я не знаю такого слова. I'll tell you what. If I was to ask you specifically define failure, Lomachenko, you can't define it, but I'll give you an example. You ready? Failure, think of Salido. Failure, Salido. Okay? What happened to you <laughs> in the Salido fight? That was failure. And you weren't expecting it either, were you? I think this is part of the Lomachenko brand, isn't it? It's being promoted by Klinsman Management anyway. Klinsman Management, get one of your own. Top of the line quality, very comfy and killer design. You can get on Venom original website. You can get one on Venom original. But when you see the colors, you know the sort of purple, yellowish thing. That's Lomachenko, really. No shoes on. And that is Lomachenko, isn't it? care who wins i don't care who loses i just need to see this fight there is no money out there for any real fights like demetrius andrade said in the same interview he's not planning on fighting any time in 2020 not on some of the undercards he's been rumored to fight jamal charlo says he wants to fight again but is there any real money in a fight for jamal charlo against sergey derevinchenko i don't know if the exact same amount of money is on the table for charlo or andrade uh, that was on the table maybe six or eight months ago, but a big pot of money is available. I don't know why. Maybe you can explain this to me. You're the boxer. Why are fighters so bat crazy? Why won't they just take the money that's sitting out there for him? Charlo can fight Andre for five, six, seven million dollars. Andre can fight Charlo for three, four, five million dollars. What am I missing? What is what am I missing here? Why is that money not being scooped up by these fighters and this fight happening? I, I don't care. I'm very excited for my first fight as part of the PBC stable. I've been wanting to come over to this side for a long time and it's finally happening. That's Bridges Progre as he goes into a fight against his opponent Juan Heraldez, who says the following. In my last fight against Ayenis Mendez, I remember that name from Dominican Republic is one of those guys that I always think about when I think that Dominican fighters are lazy, forgive me. I learned that I have to really control I have to really control of the fight okay bad grammar i thought it was me i can't let there be 50 50 rounds and leave it in the judge's hands i have to take as much control as i can over the fight well not you're not going to do that with this guy here though i'm going to do it with regis progre are you but with ayanis mendes yeah probably i should go back and watch that fight i haven't seen him in a long time since he got beat by who got beat by was it Rans Befellamy 
or something like that. I haven't seen it since then. Mayweather fighter, Mayweather promotions fighter, Adrian Benton, not Adrian Broner, Cincinnati, Ohio. Whoa, I guess since he's got the same name as Adrian, AB. <laughs> since he's got the same AB, let's outline that. Okay, let's like let, let's outline that since he's got the same AB right there. And it comes from Cincinnati, Ohio. That Adrian Brunner is gonna have some influence on his on the way he fights. I'll be surprised if he didn't. I'd be surprised if he didn't because Adrian Brunner was a big deal at one time in Cincinnati, Ohio. Four and oh, three knockouts, two hundred and eighty-seven to sixteen amateur record, age twenty, five nine, one hundred and thirty-five pounds. Okay, uh, that's good lightweight. Um Southpaw stance. Should I don't know. I don't know. Good thing she come from dude. Let's see. That's him being signed to Mayweather. Southpaw, right with the left hand. And of course they put money in his oh come on man. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, that's the culture they're in. But I just find it really tacky. Uh you know, immediately you put this money in his hand, they're yeah, alright. MTK Global continue to try and dominate the sport of boxing and the fighters as they pick up Dina Fons Lund. Female fighter, female fighter. You want to fight recently from Denmark. She's uh, promoted by the Sulan brothers, right? Kale and Nise. And I find her a bit attractive. She's kind of short though. So as we get ready for the Ritz and Vasquez fight, that's Ritson right there. He's got the cause of Newcastle on, Jordy, Golovkin as uh, Eddie Hearn likes to call him, flattering him really. <laughs> Miguel Vasquez, old veteran, you know what I mean? I don't know, never seems to look any better or, you know, <laughs> stuck in Mexico. Well, actually, is he in Mexico or America? Anyway, that's the, uh, I've forgotten his name, Aquif Ash. Uh, 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 something I can't remember his name anyway these two guys are fighting Leech I don't know these guys um Scottney Connolly gosh he looks butch Jesus she's pretty though I'm not trying to put her down it's pretty mm. let me see who else is there oh Ward Asumba, 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 right? He was on a Frank Warren card recently, wasn't he? I think he was. Very recently. All right. On a dangerous fight. You know, I don't expect Fury to have a dangerous fight in December. And, you know, don't blame him. You know, if you really want to fight, he'll go and have an easy little fight. And he's just beat Wilder. Let him have one. But we've got a real fight. And we can't afford to sit there and say, yeah, Fury, let's do this. You know, I can work behind the scenes on that. But we've got to be a million percent focused on Pulev because he's a world class fighter. And that whole team really believe they're going to win this fight. You mentioned obviously Deontay Wilder. We're still yet to really hear anything official on the record from him. What do you make of, of well, the seemingly the situation that we're in and the reports coming out about that third fight? I don't know. I don't know what's going on. You know, I mean, I've said I can't remember the amount of interviews I've said. Where is it? like? You think you just put a post out, wouldn't you? Going, guys, I've been laying low. I'm focused. I want my belts back. I don't know. But it's so weird and contractually. What sort of job have these people done for Deontay Wilder? What? It's just evaporated. The rematch was. You just come off a global pandemic, right? It's thing called force majeure. So. You're basically being told that by, see you later, you know, where are these people coming out and enforcing their rights? They obviously don't have no rights. So it's, it's a disaster all around. And now Deontay Wilder, what's he, I, I, I just, you know, I don't, something's very strange, you know, and you basically, like I say, you've got Bob and those guys coming out saying, see you mate. And Shelley comes out and goes, no, no, we do want the fight. Well, protect your rights if you've got any. But does he even want, I mean, yeah, weird, weird, really weird. But mate, listen, maybe Wilder just don't, he ain't got it in him. Maybe he's got his, you know, 20 million or 30 million and goes, do you know what, I don't need this in my life anymore. And if that's the case, good luck to him. But how can you not want to end your defeat? You know, can you imagine AJ uh, or us off the back of the Ruiz situation, getting in a position where you, he just went missing and you didn't hear from him. And then I just came out one day and went, you know, and Ruiz's team went, sorry, it's expired. And I go, oh God, well, we did want the fight, but, and then Ruiz just goes off and defends the belt he won off you. When AJ lost, I've never seen a man more focused to get his belt back and to beat this guy. 
So that's sometimes the difference of what's in some people and not in other people. But I just, you know, weird. Weird all around. You know, weird from Wilder, weird from the team and Shelly Fink. Like, I just, how do you let this get in this position? It's poor management. You know, and this guy's credibility will never be the same because he didn't take the ring match with Tyson Fury. What do you think the, the motivation behind it is? Obviously, we're hearing about a potential retirement from Deontay Wilder. We're hearing from Absolutely. America that the a date for January that was, was put towards ESPN yeah. and Tyson Fury and his team. What do you think is the motivation? Listen, if he, I would never, ever, ever, you know, tell, tell a man they, they shouldn't retire or, you know, but because this is a tough sport and he's made his money and maybe he doesn't have the appetite for it anymore. But like, winning is everything. So how can you not want to avenge this defeat? And by the way, the defeats by Ruiz over Joshua and by Fury over Wilder were quite similar in that, you know, they were quite humiliating. I'll say it. AJ went down, he got hurt, he couldn't recover, he went down, what, four times? He kept getting up, but you know, after that third round, it was very one-sided, Randy Ruiz. So AJ didn't have to pick him up from losing a close, himself up from losing a close points decision. You know, he suffered humiliation at Madison Square Garden that night, and so did Deontay Wilder against Tyson Fury. But two very different individuals. One dusted himself down and the day after the fight, when I went to his place in New York, I knew, looking at his eyes, he was going to get this back, and nothing would stop him. And you know what? Look at Dillian White against Alexander Vecchi. Like when you talk about humiliation, okay, Dillian White was winning the fight comfortably, but that knockout, you know, although he was only down for eight seconds, he was sparked, right? And it's, how many times has that been played well? You know, how many people have laughed at that who don't like Dillian White? You know, played it like, oh, look at him on the floor, look, yeah, let's do a meme, right? So you, you see that guy, not only goes, I want fucking, I want to, let me fight, let me at him again. He's doing it 13 weeks later. So I just don't, it, it has to be the, the, the fire within. I don't know. Like, I can't, if it was, if it was a lot, it, it could be punched every fire that I know. Listen, even if it was me, not a day would go by without wanting to do that again and win my bells back. I don't know. I mean, you tell me, wouldn't you? I mean, would that, are you that kind of person? Like, wouldn't you want to get back what you, you know, wouldn't you want to create history? Wouldn't you want to try and win your belt back? Wouldn't you just try and want to, overcome adversity and prove people wrong and win your world championship back and become a two-time world Sorry, we're back now. If, if, if you're injured, say something. You know, if you don't want it anymore, if you ain't got it in you, say something. But I don't, the silence is awful. You know? And if you don't take this rematch, which looks like it's just gone anyway, people will never look at you the same, never. Obviously, we're in the, the pandemic, and there was you know, missing out on a twenty million dollar gate from the Vegas fight in February. Could it just be a simple case of you know not having the money to pay the guarantees? Is it a network issue? Do you think? At the end of the day, mate. If I would have said to AJ, you "Can do the rematch, but you got to do it for free," he does it. If I said to Dillian White, "You can rematch with Beckham, but you got to do it for nothing," he do it. Right? You, if you want it, you make it happen. Right? And, and although everybody wants to maximise the earnings for their fighter, blah 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 blah, mate. If you want it, you are driven to win that back by nook or by fucking crook. You don't get it. Where does this leave AJ Fury, Eddie? Um, how is this pushed up? Fantastic. I mean, you know, you've seen the comments from Bob and that. You know, all we got to do is win our fight. And there are, you know, he's right. The terms of the deal were done. We know that. It was, you know, we announced that ages ago. The only issues are a couple of TV issues, which are very, very solvable. I don't see him causing. And, and again, I just, I don't see any disruption for that fight. I, AJ, he's desperate for that fight. Fury, I believe, wants that fight. I believe he thinks he can win that fight. You know, it's a huge amount of money in that fight. So, you know, if, if, the, if the the perception is is that we're all hungry, money grabbing promoters, we get two of those fights next year. So why wouldn't we want to do those fights? I believe AJ wins that fight and they believe Fury wins that fight. Let's go, let's do it. So this is an interesting story, actually. I didn't know about this, but I, from what I've heard about Zlatan Ibrahimovic, this really is in keeping with his character. And I've got to be honest with you, that's that sort of humble stuff that Anthony Joshua does is genuine, but it doesn't instill confidence and it makes you vulnerable to people who might be vulnerable but don't show it. A lot of things are about perspective and how you actually um, project yourself. And I think what the advice, the advice that Ibrahimovic gives Anthony Joshua here is important because you see that a lot with a guy that I believe to be an absolute and total fraud, but has made it work for him. Not Deontay Wilder, by the way, but Tyson Fury. That guy really, really annoys me. He really annoys me, but he's been able to sell it. Of course, there are other things that have aided him, which we shall get into. It is what it is. You know what I mean? I think that the extra challenge that people, uh, such as Anthony Joshua, or even Deontay Wilder, or a Dillian White 
and so on and so on face it's just a part of life and it makes him stronger nonetheless what i read here is interesting it says Ibrahimovic told Joshua to ditch his modesty. He pointed out that Joshua said, I'm not perfect, but I'm trying. Then he said, no, no, no. What you must say is, I am perfect and I'm not trying. Do like, do you like Zlatan? Now, I don't really like Zlatan as such, but from what I've heard about him, what I've read about him, what people, I, I think people believe about him, is that he's able to sort of carry off. You know, there's a time that I had a doubt about all the all the all the uh, fuss, the people in Sweden, I believe, because I was in a, on a flight and I and I, I picked up a magazine and there was something about Ibrahimovic. He was I can't remember which World Cup exactly. It was years ago, and he was supposed to be like, yeah, this was going to be his year, and you know, apparently I don't think Sweden got anywhere. I, I was in England at the time, and I was just like. You know, what's the big deal with this dude? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, uh, yeah, I think it was actually the European Championships and I was in England, yeah, and and Ibrahimovic was supposed to be a big deal. However, one thing did happen. Ibrahimovic got one of the most fascinating goals I've ever saw against England. Okay? I, I You know, it was a lob. <laughs> okay? And I, and I think, like, it, it was... Uh, it was akin to the kind of lob that um, the Brazilian dude, the popular one with the teeth and the funny hair, the genius boxer, okay, sorry, genius footballer, scored against uh, David Seaman uh, during, the, during one of the World Cups. But he scored something similar to that. And, you know, so you can't really question. You know, he's a bit like that Alan Shearer type of guy. Alan Shearer too, you want to say like, oh, man, maybe they're making too much. And then Alan Shearer will come back and like score like five goals. And then you have to set like, okay, you know what? It is what it is. So, um, yeah. I say that because I remember that Alan Shearer was having a bit of a problem when Rude Hulit took over Newcastle. And I think Rude Hulit was the first person ever to remove Alan Shearer, to sub him. And, you know, Rude Hulit being not white, it was, it was controversial. But Alan Shearer came back I think on the pitch, and he sc- he he came back with a vengeance, man. And I think he, he just kept on scoring. <laughs> he was he was amazing. So you know, even though you want to question things like, oh man, maybe he was overrated. Now you can say that, man. Alan Shearer, you know, there wasn't a lot of razzle dazzle to it. It wasn't fancy, but it was effective as fuck. It was effective. It was as effective as uh, as Van Nistelrooy. For Manchester United back then. I used to watch football. Can't stand the game now.